Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to Moon Hill Vintage Homestead. It's your old crone, Yaya. So every first Saturday of every month, our local library has a book sale and we love going there. I find mostly vintage um, cookbooks and gardening books is what I usually look for, but it's, it's just a fantastic way to support your local library. And I hope you are all maybe trying to do the same in your area. So after this uh, recent one, um, my oldest daughter and I decided to uh, see if there was any yard sales close by. And there was one just down the road from the library, as a matter of fact. And uh, I found a few cool things there. So let me share that with you. First for a dollar, I found this lace purse. It's got a nice shoulder strap. I just thought that was that was really cute. I love those. Okay, and then I found a pair of Michael Kors sandals for three dollars that fit me. I'll save these for next summer. And then I found another purse for a dollar. This rattan one, isn't that just adorable? I love the shape of that. Nice leather shoulder strap. Opens this way, really clean on the inside. Just adorable. I thought that was really nice. Okay, for a dollar, there was also this purse. the wicker look. Um, you can tell it's fairly new. I don't think this was ever used. Um, made in China, but it's plasticky on the inside. So I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's fairly new. But it's got a cute little gold and white shoulder strap. For just a dollar, they had this bouquet of um, chrysanthemums, I believe these are. There's five stems. And so for a dollar, yeah, I had to grab these up because, you know, florals are pretty ridiculously priced these days. And then also she had this adorable little bucket that had this bird's nest and little cloth bird with some greenery, which is so cute. And I'll be putting this in my booth in the springtime. Now for a dollar each, there was these rubber plastic grapes, and these are huge. Look at how long that is. And I love it that there's a set of baby grapes on there. So we've got the green grapes. The red one is not as large or as long, and it didn't have the um, set of baby ones on there. But the Concord grapes did, and they're just as big as the green ones, just as long. These look so real from a distance. I had the cute little baby ones there. A, a funny story about grapes. Um, it's been, I think, two years ago. Um, this guy was selling grape vines on, uh, I think it was Craigslist. Yeah, Craigslist. And um, so I went up there and I bought 10 of them and they were in the dormant season. I bought 10 what was labeled Concord grapes. Okay, so my husband and I planted them. We put up, um, you know, wires to, for them to run on and stuff. And they, um, they fruited last summer, but they were so, very tiny, very tiny and didn't, not all 10 of them fruited. Um, and they were very low to the ground and the animals really got to them. But I did manage to get a few of them. And I, when we tasted them, I was like, this doesn't taste like Concord grapes. This, these taste like muscadines. And I was like, no, this, this can't be right. Okay. So I just let it go through the winter time. And then this summer we had a wonderful, um, fruiting, uh, from all 10 vines and, but, <laughs> 
yeah, they were muscadines, not grapes. And I am just about the only one in our family who enjoys muscadines. So, you know, it's going to be all up to me pretty much to eat them or maybe sell them at a local farmer's market. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with all those. Maybe learn how to make muscadine wine. Who knows? But I just thought that was hilarious. And finally, at that yard sale, I found this wood basket. And it, it, on the ends, it, it, well, it looks like cedar wood. It doesn't really smell like cedar wood, but I'm pretty sure it is. Look at that coloring. And I love the shape of the handle. Isn't that awesome? And I believe this was either three or five dollars. So after that yard sale, we decided to get a bite to eat. And then on the way home, uh, my daughter Wakuna was looking it up to see if there was any yard sales on the way home. And by that time, I think it was about 1230, pretty close to it. And we found one that was kind of really off the beaten path. And when we pulled in, they were packing, starting to pack things up. But we got out anyway and started looking around and the elder lady who was running the yard sale told us that we were the only people who had stopped that day. And so they decided to, it was noon, you know, around lunchtime and they decided to start packing up, but she gave us a chance to look around. And because of that, us being the only ones, she gave us really good deals on the things that we found. So let me show you a few of those things. Okay, first is this little Turkish coffee maker. Or at least that's what she called it. I, I was it, it did look like that's what it would be. It's copper on the outside, at least. Brass handle. Um, and I gave $5 for this. Um, and I'll probably just sell this on one. Okay, for a dollar. Got these two glasses. I, I had, when I saw these, I could have sworn that I had a set of these already. And I was just going to add these two to it but I can't seem to find them. So I don't know what I was thinking, but um, I love the old cars on there. However, before I started filming, I was looking these over, holding them up to the light so I could see better to see if there was a marking on there. And one of them has a crack in it. So the one that's not cracked, I probably just put in my kitchen and keep for myself until I find more of these because uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Okay, for a dollar, she had this little bell set. I have no idea what it would go on. I'm not sure where this was made, but I loved the sound of the bells and the fact that they were obviously hand-painted on there. And if I can't figure out what this is and maybe put it online, then I will probably use these bells in some kind of craft project, but I love that sound. Love it. Okay, and uh, I think for a quarter maybe, she had this little unopened pack of um, these buffet napkins. They're really, got a really pretty floral and butterfly motif on there, and I will use these to decoupage with. Okay, for three dollars, I think she might have charged me only two. Either way, uh, I remember these back when I was a kid, and I don't recall very hardly ever seeing a redhead of these. But it's a little bride doll, and um, of course the plastic is dirty. And I took her out and checked her over, and I mean her dress is a little bit dingy, but her face is and hair is in perfect condition. The dress itself is in perfect condition. It's just all a little dingy. And um, just see if I can get it through. Her eyes do blink. So that was really, really cute and nostalgic. And then for a dollar, grab these two wall sconce mirrors. Uh, you know, there's nothing really special about these, but I'm, I think I will end up painting these, cleaning the mirror up really nicely, painting them, probably spring color and put them in my booth in the springtime. You know, for a dollar, you can't beat it. 
Also for a dollar, there's a set of five of these brown Dynex made by Thermos coffee mugs. And this is what a lot of restaurants I can remember back in the 60s and 70s, uh, they used these type of uh, mugs in the restaurants. Uh, they're in really good shape, really good shape. Not too scratched up. I don't think somebody ruined them in the dishwasher like you usually see them. And I know it's brown. It's not all that great of a big seller as far as colors go, but I have never had a problem selling these, um, especially if they're made by Thermos. Uh, um, even singles, um, people will buy them up. So yeah, for a dollar, couldn't beat it. Okay, and for the absolute deal of the day, the month, maybe even the year, um, my daughter Wakuna found these just sitting on the ground next to a tree. She asked the lady uh, how much she wanted. She said $10. So uh, I got them, and lo and behold, guess what? These are Waterford Crystal. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? Now, these um, come in different versions. Some of them are a lot fancier cut and, and styled and stuff, but these particular ones sell for at least $100 for the pair on eBay. So I am really torn as to whether I am going to keep these or sell these because, I mean, honestly, I don't have any other Waterford Crystal. Let me see if I can get the mark to show up. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And um, I follow a channel called Lady Mary Beth, and she used to work for Waterford Crystal. And I have learned so much about not just Waterford, but other types of crystal and um, upscale fine dining wear and stuff by watching her channel. So give her a lookout. Okay, so the last thing I found at that particular yard sale was the um, um, Early American Press Glass. This is Indiana Glass. I believe it's Tierra. Uh, it's a punch bowl. It's just beautiful. I'm, I don't even think it's ever even been used. Just a beautiful, beautiful design on there. Here's the pedestal. And I love how it has this curvature to it on the bottom there. So it sits inside like this, very heavy. And with it, it came in its original box here and 12 cups in perfect condition. It even had the original metal hooks with them with it too. So for 20 bucks, I thought that was another great deal. So in my area, there is um, a Salvation Army store, which I don't often stop in there. It's very, very small. And especially here lately, um, I haven't been finding very much. But on this particular day, I did find a few things. Uh, this one, the price tag has fallen off, but I'm sure I, I didn't pay any more than $5 for it. This little wall sconce with the uh, three candle holders here. Um, I didn't see a manufacturer's name on the back. However, it did have a 1978 Made in USA mark on the back. So I will definitely be putting this in my booth. Okay, for $1.49, um, I found this little wall plaque. And, you know, it's got, it's crackled here, um, crazing, I guess you would call it, even though I'm not sure, even sure what this is. Um, I just thought it was cute, you know, got the little boy on here and, and then his bed. He's got a thermometer in his mouth and a little poem down here. So, I mean, for a dollar and a half, I'm going to try to clean it up best I can and just stick it in my booth. Uh, this will be kept with my uh, other chalkware, which most of my chalkware collection is hanging in my bathroom. 
except for the things that are food related. The things that are food related are in my kitchen and dining room. So for $3.99, there's this floral round plate, wall plate. Um, oh, there's actually no hanger on here. I'm not sure how, maybe it's got a lip right here. Maybe it'll hang on a nail. And I may even touch up the paint because it does have a few little flea bites on there. It was really cute. Put that in my collection. Okay, I found this little Asian pillow. I believe all their pillows are a dollar. Uh, silky feeling. Not sure if it is real silk. Kind of doubt it. But either way, uh, with the birds and the colorful clouds on there, I just thought it was perfect to add to my Asian collection. And speaking of, I found this Vento box made in Japan with $1.99. The, um, there's a little handle that's supposed to go right here to lift the top, and I'll have to come up with something for that. Try to find some kind of replacement, but for it all, you know, that cheap, it was it was worth it. Little three sections of plastic here. Put your different foods in there. So, yeah, that was a good buy too. And one last thing from the Salvation Army. Some more of the plastic wall hangings. This was only $2.99. And it's a set of three. And it's a, let's see if you can see that. The mailbox with the greenery. And this one is a water pump. I know the colors aren't bright, uh, but it's in excellent, excellent condition. And it is, uh, has a made in 1972 Burwood. Okay, and then this one is, uh, it looks like a saw and some wood that has been cut. And then a cute little squirrel at the bottom. So I don't know, I will, sell these, clean them up good, sell these as is. If they don't sell, I would consider painting them, but only if they don't sell. I, I just get, yeah, that's really a burr in my side about um, how people paint, paint things, um, things that have value. Uh, I really wish these crafters and people who redo things, which I do it myself, um, but I do take the time to really research it and see if there's, you know, a value to that item that, that I could resell as is. Um, I was watching a crafter recently, and she had, now I collect McCoy. She was taking a McCoy picture, I think it was probably about that big, and something about she didn't like the color of it or something, but she painted it up with just, you know, some acrylic paint or something, painted it this god-awful color for one thing, and just freaking ruined it. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how could you just, you don't know anything about McCoy or pottery or anything? You didn't even think that, okay, this is an unusual mark on the bottom. Let me look this up. Because I guarantee you, she probably could have got at least $40, $45 for that picture. So, yeah. That is really a pet peeve of mine. So I did have one more thing from Salvation Army, and this was only 49 cents, and that's why I bought it, plus the fact that it had the original box. But this was made, or uh, uh, had a date on it from 1985. Uh, pinstripe Waves, designed by Toby Dodge, made in Japan, Japan. Um, however, I love that 80s pinstriping on there. Uh, the infuser is missing, so it's just the teacup and the lid, but for 50 cents, why not? So, as I've said, um, I finally got a booth in a local antique store, which is called Ringgold Feed and Seed Antiques, and it used to actually be a feed and seed store for many generations, and then somebody turned it into an antique store, and, um, we were at, my daughter Wakuna and I were in there working our booth, cleaning and putting some new thing items in there. And 
as always, I can't stand it. You know, you got to look at the other booths. And I ended up finding things I wanted and bought a few things. And so did she. And I just think it's so funny how you have a booth, you're selling stuff, and then you turn around and spend your profits on other stuff, you know. But, of course, all this stuff is um, things I'm keeping for myself. And uh, they took the tags off everything, you know, how they do in an antique store. So I don't remember exactly how, I, how much I paid for each thing. So I'm pretty much going to guess. Uh, this, I'm sure, was, all, I think, $7 or less than $7. The Spice of Life motif on there. Um, the creamer. I have the sugar bowl already. And so when I spotted the creamer, I was like, oh, great. Now I got, I got to get that just to go with my, with my sugar bowl. I found this adorable Japanese basket. I love the shape of that. Just, just too cute. This probably, I know it was less than $5 as well. Okay, found this cute, cute um, purse. Look at those cute flowers on there. Just beautiful. Uh, this, I'm sure, was less than $10. Uh, it's got leather straps and just closes with this little hook button here. Very neat on the inside. I mean, I, I don't think it's all that old, but I really liked the look of it. And two hand-carved salad tongs fork and spoon. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. Maybe acacia. I think these were about $5 for the pair because they were marked down, but I, I loved the way the handles were carved. That swirl there. So I will be actually using these. Okay, I found a resource book. This was $8. Made in Japan Ceramics Identification and Values. Because if you're going to be a reseller, you need to always be learning. And, of course, I absolutely love anything made in Japan. So, uh, not only does it have the pictures, which I, I'm so thankful for that. I can't stand when it's all black and white. I mean, I won't buy it if it's all black and white. But it also has the um, back stamps on there. Okay, to go with my chalk collection. I think this was probably about five dollars um an owl i adore owl things um this has a 1983 mark on the back I and mean, it's a hobbyist piece but i don't care it's really old well <laughs> you know at least 40 years old and um you know the colors aren't all that great but it can always be repainted if i feel like it one day but uh, it's just cute just love that Okay, so let's see. This one booth had 30% off, so I think I only paid maybe 3 or $4 for this. But it's plastic, and it's in the shape of a rolling pin. They stuck this in there, so I assumed it came with it. and I will use that, of course. Um, but um, you can hang this on the wall. This is so 70s, 80s, because you know, that little bow is a dead giveaway of the 80s motif things. Um, but, I, you know, for that price, I thought it was really cute and neat. And, um, yeah, I will probably put that in the booth. Found and let's see. No, it wasn't the same booth. But I did find some uh, fabric that I thought was just adorable. Uh, I believe this was marked down as well, but I don't remember how much. And I'm pretty sure it was at, these are at, two things are at least a yard. But I thought the um, motif on this was just beautiful. Let me see if I can get it to focus and get in there good. Isn't that beautiful? The colors are, are very vibrant. And I, I just think it's beautiful. I'm not sure what I'll make with it. I might even sell that online. I, because, I don't know. I kind of thought that was... Uh, Pretty much an unusual looking fabric. Okay, this one, this almost has the feel of upholstery, but not quite that thick. 
this would be great to make a um, small tablecloth, I'm sure. Um, but it, it has that wonderful um, fruit motif on there. Uh, very vibrant colors. Really, really cute. Okay, and one final thing for today's haul to go with my Asian collection is this pair of sandals. I'm like, oh my gosh, aren't these freaking adorable? <laughs> I will never wear these. They will just be put with my other Asian things. Look at those koi fish. Uh, just love it. Love. It's acrylic. They feel acrylic. I'm sure it's some kind of fake wood. It, there's a sticker that reads made in Vietnam on the bottom. Um, I don't imagine that these would be very comfortable at all to wear, but you know, I'm not even going to try, even though they would fit me. Uh, I just think they are just, just different and unusual and just so cute. So, well, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Have a great day.